Welcome. This presentation points on the key differences between conventional dry cooling or air cooled chillers and wet cooling or water cooled chillers. And on the benefit of combining them together. The study was done on a project executed by my company City Cool, in Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Riyadh. Project is also under operation and maintenance by City Cool for a period of 10 years from 2015. Here you can see the buildings that are going to receive the cooling energy from the district cooling plant. As described earlier the two types of chillers are, air-cooled and water-cooled chillers. Air-cooled chillers use the ambient air to cool the condenser containing the refrigerant, while water-cooled chillers cools the refrigerant condenser by water coming from cooling towers. Some advantages and disadvantages of wet cooling In order to gain the advantages of dry and wet cooling together, KSU projects combine the two systems. Here is a photo of our plant. The basic principles of our plant is to Operate sweat during peak periods to save energy. Operates dry during and off peak periods to save water. Or operates both when needed. Site plan of the project. As you can see, we need almost three and a half times the land area required by water-cooled chillers to get the same energy in case of air-cooled chillers. During these off-peak periods, capacity of air-cooled chillers is enough to cover the, the estimated load, therefore saving a lot of water and benefiting from the higher efficiency of air-cooled chillers during low ambient temperatures. Here only water-cooled chillers could be used to save energy since water-cooled chillers are much more efficient than air-cooled ones. These two graphs shows the performance of air-cooled chiller with respect to load and ambient air and that of water-cooled chiller with respect to load and temperature of water coming from the cooling tower. Our conclusion Thanks for your kind view. Goodbye.